Nearly half of all government expenditures in any given year go straight into health care. In B.C. last year, that total was somewhere near $18 billion. Out of that, doctors receive $3.6 billion. According to a new report by the Auditor General, there is no way for the province to determine if that is money well spent. With little oversight, the AG contends doctors have all the power and there is systemic barriers for the government to change how it all works. Joining us to talk about the report is the Auditor General, Russ Jones. Mr. Jones, thanks for being here. Uh, good evening. First of all, take us into the report. What did you find? Uh, we, we found that the uh, uh, government is unable to demonstrate that physician services are high quality and that uh, they are cost effective. 3.6 billion is a lot of money. Should the public be at all concerned that this money is not being accurately tracked? Uh, what, what we looked at was, was uh, whether or not uh, government was providing oversight. And um, as, as we have pointed out in, in the report, there are a, a number of places where we think the uh, fee, fee for, we looked at the two, basically two largest funding models, which are the fee for service and alternative payment method. And we pointed out that there is an opportunity for government uh, to take a look at uh, improving that, that uh, funding model at the present time. Um, as far as quality of service goes, again, it's, it's what we found was that government isn't uh, and the other organizations are not providing enough oversight of uh, the performance of physicians to be able to determine whether or not quality services are being provided. Fee-for-service is used across the country. Are there alternatives to fee-for-service that would, would make it easier to track? Uh, it is used across the country, and um, there are some other models that are, are used, but not in, in this country. There's a, a couple of places in the U.S. There's one in, in the U.K., but uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's very difficult um, to, to use a different model. I, what we're suggesting is that it, it's time to maybe revamp the, the one that they have currently, which um, has been in place for a number of years. How would the province go about doing that? The doctors have long contended that their profession, they're the one who should be providing the oversight. Can the government even get involved? Well, yeah, the government currently is in negotiations, if, if, I, if I understand correctly, with the BC Medical Association, which does the uh, uh, bargaining for the, for the physicians. And uh, it's a perfect opportunity for them to take a look at, at some of the limitations that we've outlined in this report around fee-for-service. Um, I mean, one of the key things is fee-for-service is based on volume. Um, and, and another one is that one of the things that fee-for-service tends to um, um, take away from is, is where you can have physicians working in disciplinary te teams with, say, nurse practitioners. Um, and it takes away from that because unless the, the, the physician pro provides the services, um, he doesn't get paid for it, or she. Doctors have... Uh have told me that they've restructured some of the volume uh, provisions in their fee for service. Those volumes have come down. Fees for things like cataracts have come down in recent years. You're saying there's more room for that sort of improvement? Absolutely. And uh, we point out in the report uh, cataracts as a perfect example um, where when, when cataracts um, um, operations were done many years ago, it used to take an hour. Now it takes approximately 15 minutes and the fees through negotiation with the doctors has come down. It took six years for that to happen, mind you. So it's not a, a process that, that's done quickly. But there's room in, in most of the fee codes to take a look at that. Considering that the negotiations are underway between the government and BC doctors, is, the best time, or is this the best time for this uh, report to come out? I, I think it's, it's a, a perfect time. Um, we, we did during the course of the audit not only talked to, to government but we also talked to the College of Physicians and Surgeons and the BC Medical Association and um, we think that the recommendations in this report uh, will serve all parties well in, in, uh, in the negotiations that are going on. And there will be a follow-up report in a year? There will be a follow-up report in, in a year and uh, we also have some other um, 
ideas for projects that we think could be done in, in, the, in the health area. Okay, Russ Jones, Auditor General for British Columbia. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Let's head down to Shaw Tower now and introduce Dr. William Cunningham. He's the Doctors of British Columbia spokesperson. Dr. Cunningham, hi. Hello. Are British Columbians well served by the current model of fee for service when it comes to their health care? So first of all, I, I think British Columbians are well served by the health care system they now have. There's always room for improvement. I think the quality of health care in British Columbia is very good, and a lot of the population statistics point this out. We've got the best cancer survival rates in Canada. We've got the best outcomes with heart attacks. We've got uh, many uh, very, very good uh, results when you actually measure population health. Is there room to improve how fee-for-service works? There's always room for improvement and we're always open to discussions on this particular topic. There is no perfect system. We know that from looking at systems around the world. Fever service does tend to reward volume, but over the last uh, 10 years, working collaboratively with the government, where we're trying to produce a better product, we actually now reward a lot of things, such as the longitudinal relationship with a family doctor. In other words, we know that having a family doctor keeps you out of emergency departments, keeps you out of hospitals, makes you live longer, and gives you a much uh, a healthier life. The same goes for uh, many other fees that have been brought in that reward uh, activities that are, are not volume-based, but they're very much more oriented to quality of care. Dr. Cunningham, the, the Auditor General report suggests there's no way to tell from the government's point of view what is quality care and what is less, uh, less effective. How does the government or how do British Columbians get access to that sort of information? Well, I think the criticism was a little bit harsh. I think it's good that the Auditor General did in fact do this study and I'm looking forward to the follow-up one in one year. I think there are ways of measuring these things. We are in discussions with government and the health authorities in how you measure these things so that they can be reported in a better way. And I think we owe it to the uh, taxpayer to do that. Negotiations are underway right now with the government to reassess the, uh, the fees for service. Is this really the best time? I, I asked the Auditor General of this. Is it the best time for this report to come forward? I don't think the timing of the report has anything to do with the uh, negotiations that are going on and needless to say we're not going to negotiate in public uh, uh, on that topic. Uh, the negotiations though I can say are not just fee-for-service, they're about a lot of other things including also the, the alternatives that the Auditor General pointed out which are salaried arrangements or service contracts. And I guess this all comes back to just quality health care for British Columbians. And we're in a situation now where so many of us don't have access to a family doctor. Can all that get sorted out with, uh, with how this uh, money is, is allocated? I think it can, in fact. Uh, we have many collaboratives with government and with the health authorities that work on this very type of subject, finding family doctors for patients. As a matter of fact, with programs like a GP for me, in many communities, over 50% of the patients who did not have a family doctor actually have found one. And there are many other programs that we have to help doctors run their offices more efficiently. And uh, many programs where we actually work collaboratively with, uh, with non-physicians uh, so that we can uh, give better access and better care to patients. One final thing, uh, technology has certainly advanced at a rapid pace. And is that one of the key factors here? Technology has made a lot of these procedures that were done 15, 20 years ago obsolete and new fee structures need to come into place? I think that's a, a, a fair enough statement. I think it's something that we can discuss and we do discuss on an ongoing basis with uh, the Ministry of Health. I think both parties are very responsible in that way. Uh, technology has done amazing things in healthcare. The now presence of uh, having electronic medical records opens great frontiers in what we can do in uh, assessing how medicine is practiced and what the results are. So I think there are, and even with the technological breakthroughs, I think there are a lot of things that can be done and we have to sit down uh, with government and figure out what the true value of these things are. And, and you said you're, you're looking forward to the follow-up report in a year. Absolutely. I think it's very healthy. We, the doctors lead a lot of these initiatives of measuring performance, uh, measuring competence, and we are very open and welcome it. It's, a very, it's part of being a professional, and uh, we are very pleased to be involved in that.
All right, we'll leave it there. Dr. William Cunningham from the Doctors of BC, thanks for your time. Thank you. Let's head into the newsroom now. Conservation officers say they were forced to euthanize four.